So the next bit I'm working on is the manifold. Now the manifold is one of those things that apparently people struggle with quite a bit, which is why a lot of people just make one out of a second barrel. I want to avoid that because obviously a barrel is something that I buy new and have shipped and so on. Whereas brick and you know uh, and mortars I can buy locally or you know make my own. So um, it's the section that goes basically around and underneath the barrel. So if the barrel fits over the top and the bottom edge of the barrel is pretty much where this ring is here, this isn't going to be here, that's going to be on the top of it, but let's just uh, give myself a bit of a template. Um, it's as the gases go down through the wood feed where the fire is, burns goes to the bottom of the burn tunnel and then come up the riser, the barrel over here, the gases hit the top of the barrel which heats up, gives you immediate heat, sheds all that heat and then the gases drop down between the riser and the barrel skin into this space down here at the bottom. It's more like a, kind of like a horseshoe kind of shape and then flow out, down and out through the ducting and go around the bench. Now there's a, a few things to bear in mind with it. It needs to have, same as everything else with the cross-sectional area through the burn, cheap, burn feed and up through the riser and through the ducting all being the same. The only exception to that is this space here, this circular donut, donut shaped space that runs down between the barrel and the riser. As it gets down to the bottom you need to be very careful to avoid bottlenecks so I need to have a minimum of four inches gap between, again this is all in the book, four inches gap between the manifold and the insulation that's around the riser. Here I've got about seven eight inches which is huge, it's brilliant. Uh, and to be honest it's more than I'd expected. Now these earthen masonries are really forgiving so you can see that it's still pretty wet now even though it was set up last night. I made a big load of it still in the wheelbarrow and that's still fine I could use that for days from now um, and even if it went dry completely I could just wet it and keep using it. It's really forgiving stuff. So I just started playing around last night really. It was a bit dark for filming but it's getting a bit dark now. But I set up the bottom half of it just to see how it would go so basically up to here and I hit what I thought was a bit of a wall with it but I've come back today and I think I've worked out a, a brick you know, I thought I'd have to bring it in further and you know reduce that gap a little bit which as I say is more than I need but still you know a bit more is always good but I think I've actually got away with it so I'm going to take all these bricks off down to this level here which will show um, pretty much you know the, the section that I've done there's none of this around the back has been done the bricks have just been stacked up just to hold this ring which is a bit of a template. Um, it's going to be a slight shift this way with the barrel, there'll be a bit more space this side than the other but that's fine, it'll just tend to shed more heat in this direction but that's pretty much what I want anyway because the bulk of the house is in that direction, the only heat in that direction is a bit that needs to go in for the kitchen. So that's all ideal. Um, I'm not going to have a huge amount of working room around the back there but that's fine, um, there shouldn't be too much ash build up down there anyway and when I come to do my maintenance in future years I can take this clamp off the top of the barrel, pop the lid off and because I can get the vacuum down right into here and pick up all the ash, brilliant. And the same here from this clean out here I can reach my arm in and actually into the ash pit that's down in the bottom there which is because this, um, this ducting comes in one brick high so there's a little gap at the bottom, that's the ash pit. That takes the fly ash that gets drawn from, you know, when you're lighting and things like that. A bit of ash will get drawn through the system and that will tend to build up in the bottom of the manifold. Well, because we've got that one brick high space, it gives me loads of space. I can just reach in, pull the bulk of it out, you know, drop the vacuum down from the top, get the worst of it. And that's it. That's, you know, maintenance done for the entire, you know, the whole of this end of it, really. Um, so, yeah, now I'm going to very carefully start reassembling this in a way that managed to support this ring because um, I've got the barrel all good to go and uh, yeah I'll do a bit more filming once I've got the, the, uh, the manifold itself built and that is the manifold built so it's been done with the clay mortar and a few courses of brick um, I had to change the kind of brick I was using for that section there because that's um, it bridges quite a big gap there and with using the brick that has let me show you, that one with these holes in it's uh yeah i've got all sorts of trouble trying to get more to the fillet with you know just dropping straight through so i've had a fan on it just to dry it out a fair bit and uh it's pretty good i'm quite pleased with the, the clay mortar that's worked really well so the next job will be to prep and mount the barrel you can see pretty much the shape it's going to take here where it's going to go 
Um, so I'm going to bring it up a couple of inches with a nice thick, um, you know, well supported cob and that will come all the way around to a nice depth Then we'll put the barrel down onto it and uh, sink it in a little bit just to give a really nice seal around it and then we'll check the spacing between the barrel top and the top of the riser. Now if I bring it up two inches to make us this brick slightly thicker as well so I'll have to bring the whole thing up about a couple of centimetres maybe um, which will make the gap at the top ever so slightly too big so what I'll do then is I'll use some of the fire clay mix it with a bit of sand to make a little bit of mortar and I'll put a little tiny centimetre high lip just around the top here to bring it down to five centimetre gap between the top of the riser and the top of the barrel so I've put a two inch lip of cob all the way around and that's a good couple of inches thick and it's a very fibre rich mix as well because if I try to do just a clay sand mortar when I place the weight of the barrel on it's just going to sink straight into it and it might drop a bit too low so I've got a nice fibre rich so it'll give it a little bit of support laterally so it'll uh, it'll just stay on there and on the top here I've got two of my not quite split bricks each of them is two and a half centimetres thick one inch so with two of them on top that gives me a five centimetre or two inch um, uh, spacer on top of the riser so as I put the weight of the barrel down now it'll probably be proud of this because of the thickness of that layer down there but it certainly can't get too low and need resetting afterwards so as long as I place it on this I'll give it a bit of a tap down to make sure it's you know make sure it's good and bedded and flat and level and then I'm going to leave it and then I'll measure the gap at the top of it afterwards and if it's more than five centimeters I can just adjust that by putting a little bit of mortar around the top is to reduce that rather than have to you know chase that angle all over the place so all that height all over the place so the next thing is to put the barrel on really carefully you see i've placed the rim down and given it a little bit of a wiggle so that we can see exactly where the lip of the barrel should go so yeah hopefully that should work okay and easy and jolly down. Just give my way a bit. My way a bit. Yeah. Right. That looks pretty good. But that's very, very high. So that's actually better than it being too low. Let's just have a little look. Snug in two places. Is that good there? I think so. A tiny crack isn't a massive deal. Yeah, I think that's alright. So we can bring the whole see if thing you can get to see light through it. This way, just a touch. It's going to get. A little bit more scale. It's going to get seeding all around the outside of it anyway. It's just to create a lip for it to sit on. Okay. And I am happy with that, so I'll just check my levels. Oh. I mean, it's high, so I'll have to definitely have to put a little. Uh... <laughs> That's perfect. I can't hope that it's going to be perfect all the way around. It's perfect. <laughs> nice. First time, perfect out the gate. That's unbelievable. Lovely. So that's it. Perfect. Really pleased with that. Um, I ended up not going with putting the lid on. I wanted to be able to see down it as it was going on. But I can already tell that because the uh, the lid dishes in about an inch, I'd be very, very close. I might have to bring it up a couple of mil, but it's very, very little in it. So I'm really pleased with that. That is... Can't pick that up on camera probably. But that's a really nice fit all the way around. Now I just need to seal around the outside with a bit more cob with a bit less fibre in it. And then uh, yeah, we'll put that on to try and get it dry. 
So that's got the lid on it, so that's all sealed in now. I'll put a few inches of cobble around the outside just to seal it all in really nicely. Obviously this will all have um, you know, a nice plaster finish and so on eventually. And then I've partially closed off the fuel feed and I'm blowing a 2 kilowatt fan heater down into it to heat up. Yeah, I can already feel a little bit of heat building up in the top there. So hopefully it'll heat the drum up a little bit and it'll help to dry out some of this cob and stiffen that up. So if I'm right, we should have... Yay, there's a bit of heat coming out there, but not much. So it goes to show just how much is being absorbed by all of this currently, because of course 2,000 watts of electrical power is nothing like the sort of power that's going to be going through that just with a handful of sticks once it's running. So yeah, that's it. That is the barrel fitted.